Can you say anything in the beginning? What do you what do you monkey what? Monkey around with words. So go down. Down. Be patient, Kai. Down. Down. Okay. Okay, good job. Why do you want to record, bud? Quar. Okay, then go down. We wanted to make everything in George's world something that he would want to be curious about. reached into the Curious George books and touched anything in the world, nothing would hurt you. Everything had just a little bit of a softness to it. The whole stylistic approach to Curious George was everything had sort of a caricatured look to it, and it was a little bit more simple. Everything from the buildings, to the character designs, to the vehicles. If you look at the cars in the original books, um, they're all rounded edged and they're very kind of classical, almost kind of that 40s, 50s look. We tried to match that when we do all the vehicles. We took out all the little details and we just kept the simple, basic shapes of everything. The origin of the car and the story came out of a need for Ted to get to the museum with the Magnificator. Columbus, I need to borrow your truck. My truck? Thanks, Blue. Be careful! We kind of created this warm and friendly vehicle that was very kid-friendly, but at the same time looked like a Volkswagen. <laughs> you don't have to go very far to make a Volkswagen okay. fit into the Curious George world because it had such a Curious George feel. So Volkswagen was actually a, a pretty natural fit for us. Before they even partnered up with us, we had actually designed some Volkswagens into the background cars in our film already. And then we took the designs that they gave us, which was a real car, and we tried to kind of simplify them and make them fit into the Curious George world while still being that car. Oh yeah? Well that's not physically possible for me to do! Dave Lee, our, our prop designer, did a drawing of what the Curious George version of the car would look like. And he took a real car and made it a little bit softer, a little bit rounder. It was just a matter of rounding up most of the shapes because the, the basic shape of the truck was pretty good for what we needed. I'm seeing multiple violations of rules of the road. Multiple violations! We took out all the hard edges and all the sharp corners on it and just made it kind of round and poofy just to be more appealing to kids. George, what are you thinking? Tighten your seatbelt! Take a look at the interior of our vehicle and it's you know, very kid-friendly. There's a big steering wheel all the dials and all the numbers and all the text that would normally be in the interior of a car we have to dramatically remove that to keep it just really simple and clear and clean there are lines painted on the street for a reason we wanted to give the vehicle personality so if you kind of look at the vehicle closely you'll notice that the headlights and the grill kind of look like a, a face most of the things in the film that George would be curious about, I tried to make either red or yellow or some sort of bright, you know, happy colors. And I think the nice thing was choosing a red car. We wanted Ted's car to stand out in the long shots. When you're in a busy cityscape, there's a lot of things to look at. So whenever there are long shots of Ted driving, there are very few red vehicles because we wanted him to stick out. Wow, there is a parking problem in the city. At the same time, since it has personality and has that cuteness to it, you also want it to be kind of a character in the film too. And that red color was just perfect. Kids, don't try this at home. It was nice to have actually the 
hero car, and so it had to look like a nimble car and something that was a little bit sporty and fun to drive. It's got the ability to jump off piers and to come through in the end and save the day. It's the perfect car. <laughs> Excuse me.